Hi guys, and welcome back to Resistance Adventures. Today I'm going to be talking about character customization in video games. As I'm sure is true with most of you, I thoroughly enjoy customizing my own character in video games. The ability to just create that perfect you that allows you to experience the story as if you were really playing as yourself in that particular world. Personally, I gravitate towards RPG games that have a really good character customization, even if the story or gameplay is a little lackluster. If the creator is good, that's all that really matters to me. Something I've noticed over the years is that while you're able to make do with most games and create a character that you don't mind staring at for the next potential 80 plus hours, there's not many games that actually allow you to perfect what it means to truly be you to truly embody your own personal character. Here are a few of the games that I think did really well in the character creator department, and why I think they did so well, as well as a few games that really tried their best, but could have used some improvement. If you don't like spoilers for video games, then turn away now. This is your spoiler warning. I might spoil some things unintentionally. I'm going to try not to, but either way. Number one, the next one will be better. Now for a lot of these games, the ability to truly customize your character has gotten better over the years. Some of the early versions of these games did not do so well. Animal Crossing springs to mind as one of these games. The first few games really lacked the immersive character customization that got my creative thinking going. Even with the custom clothing designer, it really made it hard to make things exactly how you wanted them to be. Thankfully, over the years, Animal Crossing specifically, and other games have stepped their game up, some in big ways. In the newest installment of Animal Crossing, for example, they really let loose with what you could make for yourself, as well as adding like a million things that you could already use that were pre-made. The result was a character creator that allowed you to really feel like you were personally running around in your town. A lot of games could learn from this. Just because you mess it up on the first few tries, or don't have character creators at all in your games, doesn't mean you can't get it right eventually. Keep trying guys, the fandoms are a lot more forgiving than you think they are. Number 2. It's good enough. Some games give you a vast range of clothing and customization items that you think you will like, but they're still not quite enough to reach that perfection that you have in your eyes. Sometimes you play a game and you think your character's close enough to what you had envisioned, and you're alright with that. Games like Sword Art Online and the God Eater series both come to mind when I think of these. In these games, you get a massive amount of different clothing options. But even then, the options are tailored to the in-game universe and can't really capture that perfection that you're looking for. That being said, if your game is action-packed and as fast-paced as games like God Eater, for example, then your mind can overlook some of the fine details and see your character as just a blur that looks pretty close. Close, but just not quite there. Number three. You do it. The other side of the spectrum there are games that manage to be both the best and the worst at character customization at the same time. Most of these programs are not technically games, more social media platforms such as IMVU for example. But there are actual games such as Calvin Returns, this is Son Goku, or Minecraft on the PC that most definitely are games and still fall into this category. In this, developers could either not be bothered or thought that customization meant the player wants to do everything themselves. Sure, games like this allow you to perfect your character exactly how you want them to be, but not all people want to spend six hours working on something as tedious as their character. Most people just want to get right into the thick of things. If you're willing to put the time in, though, some of the characters you can make are pretty amazing, and I honestly encourage you to go into a Google image search and just look at some of these games' custom characters people have made. The things people can, can make when they put their mind to it would just blow your mind. 
Number four. What? Ours isn't good enough? And then there are these games. Oh boy. Look, I get that you want to tell a story through the eyes of your fearless hero. You want to recount the adventures of Jane Smith as she adventures across the cosmos and shows everyone that she's a fearless badass who can do anything better than the rest of the world. <sighs> Games like these are difficult for me. Cult classics like Legend of Zelda or Mario or even the old Pokemon games might be able to squeak out a pass for me, but modern day games do not. Look, we're playing a game. We want to play as ourselves, not generic crew cut video game protagonist number one. Some of the classics have gotten past this. Take the aforementioned Pokemon, now allowing you to customize the player and look however you want it to. Or like Grand Theft Auto, that used to force you to play as somebody else and dress them up slightly, now allowing you to play as yourself with your own unique storyline. Playing as their characters was fun when the technology was not good enough to allow us to make our own. But at this point, it is. What I'm saying is, follow Pokemon's example, game devs of the world. And that's it. There's my rant about customization in video games. I know, another person throwing their opinion out on the internet, right? Boring? I know. But fear not, faithful viewer. Next time, I plan on doing something interesting. Or at least partially interesting. But for that, you'll just have to wait and see. Well, that's all I got. <laughs>